So I changed here. Look, I changed the view model in the UI module. So I changed this component here. I added a closure to it. And I got a build failure in the adapter layer because now we change, I changed the interface of this model, the initializer. Now I have a build failure in the concrete module here that adapts this communication. Where is it? Here. So I need to pass also a selection here. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Which needs to be exactly the same as here. In the adapter layer, we will inject this selection behavior. Okay, that's it. So who creates the view models? Remember the adapter here that converts the, this tiny adapter that converts the expense into expense item view model? Mm -hmm. And this is the adapter layer now. This is the concrete place where we can inject this kind of behavior. And another thing that we have here is the Expense. The actual expense. Exactly. We have the expense here. This is an expense, the actual expense domain model. So here we have all the information we need to create a detailed view controller. Let's create a method here. Private function show um, expense. How slow my Xcode is. What's going on? Okay. I thought it was my connection. <laughs> so <laughs> No. It's not. Using controller. This is a let's say UI view controller. And here we can create a detail view model. Detail view model is the expense. Detail view model with an expense. KOVC equals expense view controller with the expense view model. All right. And then we just show it. But show detail view controller sender controller. So we need to pass a closure here, selection. Wow, that's going on to my Xcode. <laughs> yeah. Right, the selection here is a closure that sends no parameters and returns void. And we have one here that needs, it takes an expense in a view controller and returns void. So maybe I can make this return exactly yeah, whatever what we want there. So we need to turn a closure rather. And let's quickify the controller. Whoops, weak controller to avoid return cycle here. Okay, and now we can pass. When there is a selection, we will call show with the expense that we already know. Maybe we can even hide the name. Mm -hmm. Show expense using controller. Awesome. Exactly, we're calling the function here, right? We're not passing the function as a param as a reference. We're calling it. We're calling show. We are calling show that returns a closure. Exactly. <laughs> yep. All right. Now, when I select something, boom, it navigates. Fantastic. And then we see the detail. A restaurant, expense, groceries, description. Gasoline, quite expensive. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
So if we move this logic to the adapter layer, we have all the details we need. We have the expense, we have the view model, we have the controller. So we don't need to pass details that we don't need around. That's it. Makes sense. Now, there are other solutions, common solutions. One is to, instead of adding a select, select closure here, is to add a, an ID, for example. Mm -hmm. The ID of the expense. So instead of depending on the expense, where is it? Expense. Where's my expense? X code is not helping. All right. We keep the ID of the expense in the view model. So every time you select it, you can ask a service to resolve that ID into an expense. But then you have this extra layer of this extra request of requesting the expense for ID to a service. Yes. But if you move, if you use a closure, you remove this extra request that either will request from a service or for a database. And this can be an asynchronous request. It can be a slow request. It would add some lag to the user experience, mm -hmm. but can work as well. Yeah. It just, it, uh, once again, we're leaking information that the UI is not going to need. We're, we, we would pass the ID for completely different purposes that the UI doesn't know about. So, yeah, sure, it works. Absolutely. Yes, the, the view model doesn't need an ID. Mm -hmm. We never show an ID in the screen. We only need it to then fetch the, the expense from a service so we can present the detail, which adds friction. So I prefer to use a selection closure, the model, and inject the behavior I expect there, showing a view controller or calling analytics, whatever. I inject this behavior from the adapter layer because there I have access to all, all the details I need. Now, some people don't like to add this selection to this item view model because let's say you want to reuse this view model in a watch os application that doesn't have a detail mm -hmm. model but i still need to pass a selection closure to it also when we added a selection closure here we broke the adapter layer remember we have to yeah we gotta build error here because we had to pass this closure around and if you have many extensions every time you added something to the view model you break multiple modules so another way you can solve this without a selection closure is to create another view model just for this behavior. If you don't want to add this to the item view model, you can create a selectable expense, this item view model. <laughs> it will have the selection closure here new wrap both of them so here we get the view model yeah and the selection now the ui that requires a selectable one uses the defines in the, in, in its interface that it needs a selectable view model. And the ones that don't, you use the item list view model only. So when you want to have this separate behavior, like sometimes I need to select, sometimes I don't, you combine them, you compose the old view model with a selection closure in a separate item. This way, you don't need to change the interface of your existing view models. That's it. But now our view controller that needs a selectable expense here will require 
expense list item view models. And now we're making changes only in the UI module here, right? Mm -hmm. You know, breaking the extensions. Yeah, that was in the delegate. That's uh, still self. That's Whoops. the. <laughs> yeah. What did I change here? All right. Yes, it's here. Everywhere it's selectable. Yeah. So expense. View model name. And we need to convert now expenses into selectable. Selectable. What was the name? What was the name? Selectable. Yeah, expense list item, you know. It completely gave up on auto completion. So we passed the view model. Uh huh. And we move the selection. The selectable detail. Make sense? That's it. That's another solution as well. Yeah. Boom, it works. And now, even the view controllers are decoupled from each other. So when you need this separation, again, you don't need this all the time. If you don't need this, don't do this. This is an advanced setup. When you have many modules and you want to keep coupling very, very low, low coupling. That's it. So also, instead of having the closure in a view model, you can also create cell controllers. Each cell can have its own controller that holds that selection closure. Mm -hmm. Does it doesn't need to be in the view model? It's a choice. If you are using cell controllers because you have complex cells that need some kind of control, you can move the selection closure, which is again just void to void, into your cell controllers. And that's how you keep your components decoupled and you can map from domain to UI and back. Actually, you don't need to convert back because you can inject the behavior already with the data you need. 